Assalamu alaikum, greetings of peace. All right, before we get into this exclusive interview with Patrick, Ben David, and myself, we'll show a few clips from it. Jake, how about yourself? What's your story? What's your background? Yeah, so I was uh, raised a Roman Catholic. Uh, my entire family is Roman Catholic up until today. Of Revelation, where Jesus is going to come, which, by the way, Muslims also believe that Jesus is, is the Messiah. I personally never really believed in the religion, primarily because the theology never really made much sense to me. Would now, you accept with a site called Jew Watch? Answer that. Uh, this. Think about the deeper questions in life. What's the purpose of life? Does God exist? What religion is true? Their religion is 95% like what Jake mentioned. It's about worshiping God, being devoted to a righteous way of life, loving your neighbors, taking care of your parents. That's what 95% of, of Islam is about. And so I went on this search and eventually found the path of Islam primarily because I believe that it's the only religion today that truly supports pure monotheism. Tate, if every, Andrew Tate specifically uh, okay, decided uh, okay. that Muslims Just, stand for their principles. Uh, That's why he converted, right? Yeah, yeah, Andrew Tate. Uh, uh, I'm this seems like it's going to end up being the roundtable discussion or what ended up being a debate of the year. Now, this is with two career Islamophobes, meaning that they attack Islam and Muslims for a living. And they're the top players in this $1.3 billion anti-Islam industry. One in the Arabic-speaking world and one in the English-speaking world. Now, Patrick did a great job in hosting this. We commend him for that. Hopefully others will follow suit and not just talk about Muslims and Islam, but invite qualified Muslims to the table, to the discussion. He was brave and courageous enough to do that. And we are going to be talking about this roundtable discussion with Patrick and myself and getting his feedback and what we intend, what he intends to do for the future in this. So again, much respect, Patrick. And now for this exclusive interview with Patrick, David, and myself. Enjoy. God bless. This guy right here, this guy's trying to build a Dawa center in our country. I'm not talking to you right now. You're a solo. You're trying to build a Dawa center here. Islam is violent by nature, my friend. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. This is exactly why we need the Dean Center, because we have over 300 million Americans who know nothing about Islam, like this guy. Hey, you want to have a talk? Yeah, this guy's trying to build a Dawa center in our country. And Surah 9 is the most violent chapter of the Quran. The Dean Center will be a source of light, a mega dawa center, an educational center, helping our brothers and sisters in humanity truly understand Islam and Muslims. And brothers and sisters, remember the great rewards of just guiding one person in humanity to the truth is better than everything in this dunya. So get in on all the rewards and blessings. Click the link below, donate right now. May God Almighty Allah reward all of you. How you doing, brother? Good. How you doing? You're on the Dean Show now. I'm yes. You tame the studios. <laughs> you know, it reminded me. I was looking at this picture. Yes. And I, um, I remember, uh, you know, growing up, I used to have. Uh, I don't have now at this point now, but I just remember having uh, Tony Montana, uh, The Godfather, all over my apartment. You did? Yeah. You were that guy. And I remember, yes, I was that. <laughs> that was my life. You and I both. But and I see you taking a direction, seeking the purpose of life, you know, get turning more towards God. I see myself doing the same thing. And now we we're, we're making a historic moment. I think, I really like the vision that you have trying to get Christians and and Muslims to get past the differences and work together on some of these commonalities. You know, with the uh, sexualization of the children. Leave our kids alone. Leave our kids alone. gender ideology. A man walked into the women's bathroom at McDonald's. I think my, life, my daughter goes into those bathrooms and no man needs to be in I'm there. You man. understand me? I'm a man. You are a man. You are created said, as a man. I said, what you, you are a man. Start acting like a man. You recently had a Habib mm -hmm. on your mm -hmm. program. And, yep. and we're making history here. We just came out from the two sides together and tell us what's your reaction first we almost it didn't almost happen it was a lot that was it was a lot yeah obviously you you know we had a, a, a we had a call with you know there was a 
uh, misunderstanding from uh, um, Mohammed Hijab and they made a video thinking we were going to ambush them and we said no we're going to be just doing a regular discussion together and then you were able to orchestrate a Zoom between myself, yourself and him which was a phenomenal call and then that led to Jake coming on and Daniel coming on which by the way I thought they did a very good job and Robert Spencer he, he came and he represented his views, his philosophies, love him or hate him, he did what he was going to come and do, and I was impressed by Brother Rashid as well, by the way. To me, like, the two that were most impressive was Brother Rashid and Jake, because I know of Daniel, and I know of Roberts. I know what they were going to do, but I was uh, impressed by them. The, the challenge is with what the goal I have in mind after spending two and a half hours with them, progress is going to take a minute. It's not going to happen overnight with one, you know, one debate or one discussion or one podcast or one show. We're going to have to have a lot of these conversations to realize what's going on. I can tell you for a fact, it's going to be very hard, but the enemy is real. If we can figure out a way to see what values and principles we have in common and which enemies we have in common, then we can make some progress. But if not, that division is constantly going to be there for a long time to come. What do you see happening? Because uh, you are, you, you've been very vocal about this, and what caught my attention was the uh, program you did with, was the pastor or the... Um the uh, Charlie mm, Kirk. Charlie Kirk, yeah. And yep. you, were, you were talking about, look, if Muslims and Christians, if we can, what, you, in your words, what were you saying? What were yeah, you, what, I, I, what's I, the vision? Because to me, I don't understand why 74% of Muslims vote Democratic. I don't understand it because that's the party that is more for leniency with LGBTQ, with leniency on what they teach in school, with leniency when it comes down to the family nucleus, the father-mother relationship, the father-son relationship, the, you know, the, the ideas they came up with that took in 1940 where only 4% of uh, women who had kids in America were to single mothers to today it's 40%. We went from 1940 in America, only 4% of women were single mothers when, when they gave birth to a child. Today it's 40%. Those policies were policies of FDR. They were the policies of Lyndon Johnson. They were the policies of democratic policies. I don't see the Muslims following those policies and the way they live. So why they vote that way is very concerning to me. And then on the Christian side, we're like, no, 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 you know, we can't, we can't talk to Muslims. We go, no, 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 we can't. You know, it's, it's, it's almost a little bit combative. Of, I, I talk to anybody but a different religion, especially, especially Muslim or Christian. I'm trying to see if we can get a way to... Uh, unify. And, and here's, here's the way I broke it down. Today, we can have the fake debate all day long. Let's do it. Okay? Well, Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad this, or you know, Jesus this, or Bible this, or Quran this, or this. You can do that all day long. None of us know 100% what's going to happen if we die. It's all faith. Believe in something you have not yet seen. We could all be wrong. We could all be right. One of us could be right, and the rest could be wrong. We don't know. That's the risk we're taking. I take the risk as a Christian. You take the risk in a, you know, as a Muslim, right? Okay. Then there is the business side, which you have to respect the fact that how fast the Muslim religion has grown with their average in the, each woman averages 2.9 kids, Christians average 2.5 to 2.6, and non-Muslims are 2.2, and the replacement number is 2.1. You guys used to be at 4.5, by the way, 30 years ago, 1990, 1995. It was 4.5, 4.3 kids per now it's 2.9. So Christians may be sitting there saying, well, it's not fair what's going on that the Muslim religion is going to be, you know, at 3.1 billion, you know, by, 19, by 2060, and they're going to be 31.1% of the population in the world religious. But what are we going to do about that? Have more kids. They're competing. So you have faith, the debate of faith. You have the business competitive standpoint of what's growing. Then you have common enemy. Who is the enemy of Muslims? Who is the enemy of Christians? And can we find a common enemy to go after? My goal is to see if we can find this. I don't know how much of a progress we made on today's show. The fact that everybody was willing to sit down and have the conversation, I think is step number one, that's progress. But I think we got work to do. Yeah, I think people who, who are more in line with this vision is going to be important. I just, you want to bring uh, possibly uh, divorce attorneys to uh, <laughs> ma 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 marriage re reconciliation, right? Uh, what did you think about when Daniel was, he kept stressing the point of defending um, Christian 
traditionalism, you know, really going, because uh, we, we strongly believe that we do have a lot. I like lot, Daniel's a approach lot, a lot. With traditional Christians that actually care about the Bible and just don't, don't call it a book of fables, we have values in marriage, you know, preserving marriage, pre preserving chastity, modesty, uh, pre you know, opposing sexual immorality, preserving gender. You know, the concept of gender is so important. That's a shared value with traditional Christians and traditional Muslims. The importance of the family, respecting parents, respecting, you know, raising children the right way raising children to respect these values of morality, communities coming together. These are all shared values. They're traditional values. Do, do you think... Belief in God. Belief in God and, and caring about God. Do you... In common, yeah. you know, uh, it wasn't really talked about in this episode, but our love for Jesus. One of the most important prophets in Islam is Jesus, son of Mary. You know, uh, you know the Tates. And Tristan Tate actually makes this point. He... Is there are people in the world who will punch you in the face if you insult Jesus Christ. We take strongest subject. If you say anything about Jesus, peace be upon you, we're going to step up and say, what are you talking about? Don't talk about Jesus, you know what I mean? Or the Virgin Mary or anything. And those people are the Muslims. We love Jesus. I mean, things, you know, there's a whole chapter in the Quran named after his blessed mother. Things like this, I think, are important. There's a lot of, a lot of commonalities and just zooming in on some of these contentious issues, you know. What do you see moving forward, like, um, with, with this part where you know, coming to people who are in that same, who can kind of temper that, but just come for that, to really see what you're seeing, you know, on both sides, where they're not just going to be on the, on the attack. Because we could be here all night bringing up yeah. things. And yeah, you know what I liked about today's show? Brother Rashid was the only one that actually lived in a Muslim nation outside yeah. of myself. He was in Morocco, right? He gave his testimony. Jake was the only one that was, is American, that converts to... Muslim who wants to go to Morocco, right? Yeah. It was very yeah, interesting. It was, wasn't that interesting? He, he, wants, he, to read, he wants to go, to go back to Morocco. And then Robert Spencer is the, you know, coming from a place of the scholar, you know, the books he's written and the enemies he's created and the Jihad Watch, which, you know, then you have Daniel, Harvard, you know, five sons, he's given his testimony and I thought he was also a very good communicator. I thought it was great and I think you know, again, I can't wait to do two, three, four, five of these and seeing where it takes us next because I realized two hours is not enough. I may only limit it to two people next time, one from each side, and I don't know if I'm going to do four again because four, you almost feel obligated to go to everybody and there, there can be that yeah, yeah, yeah. battle. So I don't know if I'm going to go four, uh, five total with myself, but um, the, I learned a lot. This was fantastic for me to hear everybody's testimony. I think. There was obviously a good 45 minutes of it that was contentious, that was going back and forth. You said this and you said this and what about this and what about that? So both sides had to make their own arguments to defend themselves. But I thought it was a lot of progress. Yeah, I think so. I think this was, this was the hardest one, I think. I think this is, you know, the start. But I think if you can push forward and really, you know, obviously you're already, your mind's already working, you know, work through this. But I think this was the hardest one, I think. You know, getting people on the same vision, the same path, I think a lot of good can be accomplished. A yeah, you lot. Know, so, so, you know, I was, I was born in Iran, and, and here in America, I get a hold of this book called Power Versus Force. Yeah. Okay, and I'm 25 years atheist. I don't believe in God because I'm living in Iran. I'm seeing bombing happen, people dying. I'm like, I'm not having it. I go to Germany at a refugee camp, and yeah, I, do, I, I do what I do there, and I'm around Pakistani, Afghani, and I speak Farsi, and I'm, you know, now I'm a Christian. So then I come here and I'm reading this book called Power Versus Force. Mm -hmm. So our book is the Bible, yours is the Quran. And I'm reading Power Versus Force, who was written, was written 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And the author talks about levels of consciousness in life, okay, from the lowest level, apathy, shame, guilt, anger, I'm probably missing one of them, and then, you know, desire, like desiring woman, desiring food, desiring drugs, and keeps going up and up and up and then the first level of consciousness that you're going towards actually making progress is courage. So you gotta have the courage to have the conversation. Everybody today had the courage, right? Yes. For us to have that conversation. Then it goes to the next level, which if I don't say it in order, it's acceptance, acceptance. I'm willing to accept that we have differences. Okay, great. Then it's willingness. I'm willing to have the conversation. So, so far, everybody here today had courage. Everybody here today was willing to accept that we have differences and they were willing to have the discussion, right? Then it goes to reason. Can we reason? You seem like when you and I talk, we reason, right? Mm -hmm. The conversations are reason. 
spiritually, you're on a different side, I'm on a different side, but we know how to reason. I think the foundation needs to also be built that we set aside faith and we're able to reason. Then comes love, joy, then it's enlightenment at the highest level. And he only explains that only a couple of people have been made it to enlightenment. Enlightenment is a different level. Reason is a very valuable quality we need nowadays. If we don't have reason, we don't sit together. If we don't have reason, we don't want to talk to each other. If we don't have reason, we're not going to do these kinds of things. So as long as we have courage, we're willing, we're willing to accept our differences and are able to reason without wanting to destroy each other, I think we'll make progress. If we don't have those things, there's going to be no progress. I think we made progress today. I think we really did make progress. I was watching um, one of your interviews and it was very interesting. What had you, because th the main theme of the Dean Show is getting people to think beyond the materialism, beyond the material world, you know, purpose, purpose of life. And I, it was interesting at one point you were, you were talking about the things, um, what was your God at one point? Right? Mm -hmm. and how, you, mm -hmm. how, how did you get to the point where mm -hmm. you started reflecting and started to think? And I think you said, you said, what, what was, you said, uh, uh, Women? Women was my God? Yeah. Oh, all day. That was my, yeah, I mean, I, I, I that can, that you just can be a point for anything, you well, know, and that's, of course. you know, yeah. and, and, and that's something there, there's actually, um, that's something for, for myself. So I can relate. Yeah. So, uh, so I related to that, yeah. you know, those, and, and, but taking it, so you started to, th you starting to think more outside of just that and getting to, you know, yeah. at the stage of your life where you're at now. And, and by the way, if, you, if you've never met Eddie, he's 6'3", just so you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought he was like 5'8", five, 5'10", five, he's 6'3". Right. But uh, yeah, so you know, I'm, I'm having this conversation with this YouTuber called Graham Stephan, yeah. super successful business guy, young guy, 32, 33, or multimillionaire, done very well for himself, he's got like four or five million subscribers. And he says to me, you know, one of the co-hosts asked a question about God. You know, it seems like God plays a very big role in your life. I said, you know, everybody has a God, right? Some people's God's video game. Some it's porn. Some it's women. Some point. it's yeah. drugs. Yes. Some it's alcohol. Some it's partying. Some it's this. When I was an atheist, I may have claimed I didn't have a God, but I did have a God. It was partying. It was nightlife. It was women. That was my party. That's what I was doing. And you doing. considered yourself an atheist at one point. Absolutely. I was an atheist for 25 yeah. years. I wow. didn't believe it. I got kicked out of Bible study school for 25 years. I got kicked out. In Iran, I got kicked out of schools for a Bible study for just saying, I don't believe in God. You guys think you need this. You need this. I don't need this. If God existed, why did we have a war? Why did these people die? So I wasn't a part of it. And then one day, my dad is at the hospital at UCLA Medical Center after he had a big heart attack and I'm sitting there and you know the hospital's not really taking care of him they're not attending to him I didn't get happy I wasn't happy about it I got upset with the people that were working there they kicked me out of the hospital so I'm downstairs in my Ford Focus and I'm just sitting there crying this is my dad I mean this is my hero since six, six years old he's been my guy he's been my hero and then I gradually whether it was a man who gave me a Bible in the military when I was 1997 or later on when I started doing Bible study uh, uh, Friday nights from 6 o'clock till 2 o'clock in the morning or when I was going to anybody and everybody I could find to debate Scientology or Catholicism or Je you know Jehovah Witness or Seventh-day Adventist or Mormonism I was just debating everybody any chance I get I wanted to debate anybody with the topic of religion at one point I thought I was maybe gonna be a pastor and then I see my dad could potentially die change my habits change my life stop doing anything with women and the rest is history for me. From there, my life changed, completely changed. Mm -hmm. And the fact that my dad is 81 years old right now, still alive, let me tell you, biggest blessing. So God's grace to a regular guy like me has been seen and felt so many times. He's given me so, he has so much grace over this regular guy, right? That now, I don't sit there claiming I live a perfect life, I'm a sinner, I have temptations, I do a lot of different things all as of well, it, yes. all of us do. But I feel God is right now looking for people to rise up and lead, and that's the relationship I have with them. I want to be one of those that he can count on. A couple more things. How was your experience now going, you went down to actually uh, meet with Andrew Tate, and what do you, what, what, what do you see happening with this? And what? Well, listen, Andrew's loud, man. Andrew's loud. Andrew's a great, at, uh, he, he can be an intellectual guy, he can be a driver, he can be a troll, he can be a you know, sarcastic, he can be funny, he's a comedian, he's a non-duplicatable communicator. And Andrew is one of one. There is no 25 Andrews. There's only one Andrew Tate in the world. And, you know, uh, uh, the way they've targeted him, they've done what they've done. But my experiences with him, that we've spent time together, 
has been nothing but a breath of fresh air. I have not partied with him. I've not gone out with him. I didn't know the 22-year-old Andrew or the 28-year-old Andrew. I know the Andrew that I've seen him the multiple times, him and his brother. Uh, Tristan, I can tell you, you know, in the area of women, Tristan's game is a very unique game. He is a little bit too handsome. Tristan's uh, style is a... Uh, He's the guy that he's just there to back up his brother mm -hmm. and defend him. And no one can do anything to Andrew. Andrew is a revolutionary type of a character. He's going to be targeted. He's going to, be, he's going to have enemies for the rest of his life. It's never going to slow down for Andrew. The only time they're going to stop targeting him is after his last video. If he stops making videos or says anything or tweets, they'll stop targeting him. Mm -hmm. For as long as Andrew's going to be opening his mouth and tweeting and talking, He's going to be targeted. They're not going to slow down with Andrew. But I think he's a true believer that he wants to fight. And I think his voice is necessary. And he calls out a lot of these things that you also have an objection to. Me as Muslims and Christians, this whole uh, a spectrum of genders, you believe. Uh, how many genders are there? Two. Like when you asked Khabib? Two. Yeah, it could be. Brilliant. How, he was like at least you, in Russia. How many <laughs> genders? I live in the mountains, my brother. There's only two genders. When I know? went to the bathroom, he was giving the story, <laughs> right? So we can agree on that. And, I, and there's a lot more. And with that said, I just want to commend you because um, you, with this vision, I strongly believe in it. And us working together on a commonality, a common good. We don't have to compromise, you know. You, people have their strict beliefs. They want to stick to it. But we share. That's the motto of the Dean Show. We, because we care, we share. And it's up to you. If you want to take, accept, if not, reject. That's but at right. the same time, we don't have to be at each other's throats. We, like I like that analogy you gave. People are cursing you and this, that, and you're like, okay, but then they come after your children. Realize that what they're trying to do to our kids, none of us agree with. You know, none of us agree with. You know, the whole saying goes that somebody can curse you uh, out, and you're like, yeah, whatever. Hey, you're Robert, you're such a F in this. Oh, okay, cool. Hey, you know, you're such a effing this. You don't All right, cool. Hey, let me tell you, you know, you're a loser. Cool. All right. Hey, I'm going to turn your kids into teaching them about LGBTQ at five years old. I'm sorry? What did you say? There's a catalyst for that. And there's been many examples of Muslims and Christians coming together. And we can come together on other things. What do you think? I totally agree. I'm yeah. with you there. I'm with you there. Well, let, us be, let us be an example to that. My man. God willing. Thank you. Thank By the way, this wouldn't happen today without what, he, what you pulled off. And, you know, I want to get, I said that on the podcast. I want to make sure your audience knows you, you played a very important Thank role. You very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. I cannot leave without giving you a gift. If you're not yet Muslim and you're tuning in to see what these Muslims are talking about and you like a free copy of the Quran, go ahead and visit thedeanshow.com. We'll take care of the postage and everything and get it delivered to you. And if you still have some questions about Islam, call us at 1 800 662 4752. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.